Okay. Yeah, let's do this. I'm Angel. I'm here with Todd. And we're looking at a skull today. What's so special about this particular skull? Well, what makes this skull uh, special is this person in life suffered from gigantism. Um, of course, uh, a lot of people are familiar with gigantism through Andre the Giant. This, uh, this skull is probably roughly a, about 100 years old. By the suture marks and how the suture is fused on top of the skull can indicate to us the age of the person. Okay. This gentleman was probably in the age of 50 to 60 years old right. when he passed away. Uh, of course, gigantism, uh, people do not live a uh, long life because it makes your organs uh, enlarged and that usually causes death. Uh, that of Andre the Giant, he had an, an enlarged heart, yeah. which caused his death. This skull, for every... 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 skulls, uh, medical skulls that you would have in a collection, you maybe would find one gigantism skull. So they're pretty rare. Yeah, this is probably the rarest skull in the collection here at the, the museum. Okay, so you mentioned the, the lines on top. You can tell how old someone is, so what's, yeah, so what's how, telling you that about him? So how it works is when you're born, you're born with uh, what they would call four suture lines, three, you have one that's continuous. You're born with one called a metopic suture line, which at about nine months old, the front suture will heal okay. itself. Now, if you're malnourished, what would happen is that line would not heal and you would suffer from an element called metopic syndrome. So now that this is healed right here, we yeah. can tell that this person had enough vitamin deficiencies in it in its life to have let that suture heal. Okay. Now, the older you get, the more, if you, you see an elderly person, they kind of shrink mm -hmm. a little bit. In life, the older you get, the suture lines start fusing together. So when you're born, you're born with more bones in your body. As you get older, certain bones will fuse and heal. And the more fusion you have, the older the person is. Now, if this person was in their early 20s, 30s, when they passed away, these suture lines would have been a lot wider. Okay, yeah. You see them going down. Now see how it's kind of fused, where it's not really visible there? Yeah. So you can usually tell the age of somebody by the fusion of the, the sutures on top of the, the, the skull. Okay, and we know that um, this is a male skull, right? Yes, yeah. So how do we tell that? So one way, this is how I determine and usually medical professionals. So on a male, um, you have more squared off eye sockets mm -hmm. than to where if it was a woman, it's more rounded. Another feature is also the brow ridge right here. Let me see if you can see it. So the brow ridge on a male is very prominent. Yeah. To where women are, it's, it's a little bit more subtle. Uh, another feature, if, it's, if you look at the mandible, you can see sharp angles. Yeah, like a yeah. jaw. Uh, to where on a woman it would, be, it would be more smooth. Yeah. Now on this skull right here, this bone right here behind the ear uh -huh. is called the mastoid process. Okay. Now see how far down this bone protrudes? Well, the reason that bone has to grow so much bigger than if this skull belonged to a woman is because men have bigger mandibles, bigger lower jaws, and the muscle structure on that jaw, this bone, it, it attaches to this bone, and it has to be bigger to support that bigger jaw. How do you tell specifically when you got the skull that it was a gigantism skull? So uh, if you would like to hand me this skull right here. So this skull is that of a male, and see how the suture lines are very prominent? Yeah. So this individual would have 
been in their late 20s, early early 30s when yeah. they passed away. Now this is an average adult size skull. And as you can see the difference that we have here between the two, I mean, the size comparisons are just yeah massive. Oh, so yeah. let's line them up in the back. How big do you think that person was with the head that big? So when we got this out of the collection of the doctor, um, it was determined the gentleman was over eight feet tall. Wow. Yeah. This is the large, and, and, and when you fill them as you did, yeah. this skull yeah. is so much lighter than this skull. And this right here, just to show you the size difference comparisons, mm -hmm. I mean, you have, what would you say, three inches? Yeah, for three sure. Three and a half inches more per protrusion. Yeah. And what makes this skull also rare is the gentleman's femur. Yeah. So this femur right here. So the femur, that's like the thigh. The thigh bone, okay. yep. And the, the, a, a, a off subject little tip is when someone says they broke their hip. Yeah. You don't break the pelvis. When you when someone breaks their hip or fracture their hip, the ball. Ooh, so the joint. The joint. This is what breaks. Okay. So when you do surgery, this is what is replaced. Now, I am six feet tall. Uh, this femur goes into the middle of my my shin. Yeah. That's how that's how tall this gentleman was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this this skull is it's really really super heavy. It's um. You know, it, it, it was not processed where there was no, no cut on it. Um, and it was just, uh, it, it was probably processed, um, I would say, 1920s, 1930s is when the, the, the skull was, was processed. So that's probably when he died? You know, yeah, roughly. Uh, it depends on if it was used. Being that this person suffered from gigantism is probably why he was donated uh, yeah. to the medical establishment. Sure. So they could have used his cadaver for uh, for surgeries, you know, exploring. Yeah, they understanding. Could've... Yeah, understanding. Know. So it's it's just crazy to me, though, how big, like, how much bigger your head looks with the skin and the hair on it than as a skull because it looks yeah. tiny. Yeah. So you have about eh, half an inch of flesh, really? maybe a little, a little under half an inch, but there if you look it's at a, a lot yeah if you look at if, yeah if you look at a uh, you know between the muscle and the skin yeah and everything um about, about a, a little under half an inch or so if you were to remove everything from your head your skull would look a lot smaller yeah but this this guy yeah. right here it's is like, just so so tiny so head. tiny compared big dude and this skull makes my skull like comparison yeah. next to me it makes my skull look so small. And I'm a big guy, you know. So uh, we do have his full skeleton uh, missing a femur. Uh, we're going to have everything here on display. Yeah. Um, so when he was, how do you tell that he may have died in the 1920s or 30s? Like, how do you tell it was processed then? So the doctor we got him from, he was, he told us that he got it out of a medical collection uh, in the 1950s and it, it was already when he was a younger uh practitioner at a local uh, medical school i think it was no not local to michigan but i, I believe it was indiana or, or ohio midwest yeah something like that in, in in this area and he obtained it in the 1950s with the rest of the skeleton so this was probably used to teach yeah. students um in the class you know it would be a thing called a bone box where this skull and these bones would be in a box and the students would take the box to study and they would have quizzes and tests. And when he left the school, he told me that the school shut down and he was able to take this with him. So it was already processed well before the 1950s. So his guesstimation, you know, 20s, late 20s, early 1930s. So this skull, it's very like completely put together this one. It's got the hinges, it's got these different things on it. When did they start doing that? Is that just a different style? Yeah, or? so so I have skeletons in the collection here at the museum that, that date back to the 1850s, um, which show hinges. It's just different preparations. These ones are a little bit more rarer to find. Most medical skulls are prepped with the hinges, the, the springs for the, the mandibles. Yeah. 
and the latches right there mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, open uh, the look inside. Being that this gentleman suffered from such a, a rare disease, they probably wanted to keep him intact, completely yeah. intact to show him as he was. Yeah. So just a different form of preparation. And you could tell it was more for study, being that the, the mandible can be removed and right. stuff like that. That makes sense. I mean, even if you look at the back. Yeah. The size, I mean. Yeah, that's a much larger yeah. cranium. To, 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 get, to get, to have a cranium so distorted like this, mm -hmm. uh, this person suffered from a very bad form of gigantism. Yeah, so do we know exactly, you don't know exactly what he died from? No, sometimes, sometimes uh, indications will show on uh, skulls. This one right here, uh, this person died from Eagle Syndrome. And back in the day, how they used to treat e Eagle Syndrome is with morphine. And usually people would o o yeah. overdose on morphine. Um, so this one we could pretty much tell and uh, why the person uh, somewhat died from. This, this person right here, probably being that he had gigantism and that he lived a very old age, he probably yeah, died natural. of organ, organ failure. Yeah. Uh, there's no indication that he fell. Yeah, uh, what is the average lifespan of somebody with gigantism? I know the tallest man ever died at like 28. Yeah, something. Andre the Giant, I think, was in his late 40s when he passed. Usually, I mean, there's there's people that have been into their 60s and 70s, but very rare. Yeah. Usually 40s, early yeah. 50s is usually, um, you know, they can treat it now, uh, today with, uh, with, with medication. But back then it was, you know, just yeah. let it go, you know. Just doing, just living. Um, it's a lot. We were talking about the bone density and how it's like much heavier than the other oh, skull. This has to be at least three times the weight yeah, of this one. Absolutely. You know, I wish I had a scale here. I could I could yeah. weigh it. Yeah. Um, but it's just so much more dense than right. than this skull right yeah. here. Well, I get, I mean, having a thicker skull would protect you from things, so that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, well but... let's put this let's see if we can do a comparison to yours. Let's do a side okay. comparison. It's right there. So stay right there. And if you, as you can see how much more yeah. his skull would protrude from yours. Yeah. And you know, every inch of bone density on a skull is a very large uh, distortion right. of yeah. the normal I mean, growth of a, of a human skull. If the skull was pressing on the brain at all, that can't be very good for it. Yeah, it's 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 another another thing too. Um, with 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 gigantism, I mean, it wrecks havoc on the body. Everything's just so much bigger, and the organs just can't handle it. I mean, your heart yeah. can only grow so big. Your uh, an accelerated liver. growth from a young age too. Yeah, I've that's heard. yep. That's that's another. Your body's not quite able to catch up. Yeah. To hold yep. that amount of growth, like people get growing pains, but that's like ten times worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Can I hold the oh, yeah. femur? Yeah, that's a big, big leg. Not much, much larger than mine or yours. Would you like me to yours. go get another normal femur of the whole leg? Yeah. Just to compare? Yeah. Okay, I'll be right back. So, so what we have here is this is the leg of a Victorian skeleton that just came in. The skeleton was damaged. Uh, so it's in it's in pieces. Yeah. So this gentleman would have been about five foot nine, five foot foot ten in life. Pretty and this average is, size. And then if you compare his, you know, you're talking yeah. about. Wow. I mean, that's massive. Yeah. Like if you see how bigger. Yeah. It is. Ooh. I mean, it goes all the way down. Oh, can you tell us at the left or the right leg? Uh, so this would be the left. Okay. So this would be. Left leg, and this would have been, uh, this would have been a right leg. Okay, yeah, by like where the hip bone is. Yeah. Okay. So if you look, see how much bigger. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just so much denser too. Yeah. It's such a rare disease that, you know, a lot is known about it, but a lot is not. Oh yeah. Why? Well, like, this guy, like his cause of death is a mystery. There's a lot about him that's a yeah. mystery. Mm-hmm. And there, these are both male 
skulls. I mean, just look at the brow ridge. Yeah. Everything's just so much, you know, more deformed than uh, a, a regular skull. And just the size comparison. Mm -hmm. Kind of the shape of, like, the head, too, because it's kind of like... Yeah, if, you, if you've ever seen someone with gigantism, you can, you know, their bone structure is very distorted. Yeah. Their jawline, their 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 face is more elongated. Do you know at all what causes gigantism? Something with a pl pituitary gland in the body oh, the doesn't. It's, human growth hormone? Yeah, it, 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 it's supposed to control, uh, you know, growth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just like anything, if something's not working properly, it could, you know, the one side of the coin, someone who doesn't grow normally and who's very short and small, uh, if it's not a vitamin deficiency, it, if it's a medical problem, the, the gland can make you not grow tall. And then some people have to get shots. Yeah. Uh, and then on the other side of the coin is it doesn't stop working and it just you just keep growing and growing and growing. Does he have a name? I have not named him yet. Did you name um, him? This is Floyd. Floyd. This is Floyd, yes. Why is he Floyd? You know, when we bought it year, many, many years ago, that was what the person called it. Uh, I don't. I didn't ask questions. I was just, okay, uh, you know, just trying to buy it. I think we got it from, we got this from another medical uh, collection at an estate sale. Yeah. The, the father who owned this uh, passed away, so the son had an estate sale. The, the gentleman was a doctor. And he said he always called it Floyd, so... Okay. Floyd, like has, Floyd. Floyd has been its name ever since. Uh, we've, we've had it for eight, nine years in the collection. Okay. Can I name him? You can name him. Can we call him Hugh? Hugh. Mon last name Mungus? That is, Hugh that is perfect. Mungus? This is now christened as Hugh, Hugh Mungus. Mungus. <laughs> That's great. Love it. And Floyd. And Floyd. Just guys being dudes. It just being dudes. He was probably like the friend that would pick all the fights. Yeah. And he would have been like the... The, the big guy friend that, like, <laughs> okay, you know, come on, what, you know, the the, the smaller guy and the, the, the big guy. They would have been a dynamic duo. I think they would have been yeah, friends. Yeah, they would have been friends, yeah. So and wait, what time period was Floyd from? Actually, what's weird is about the same time period. Oh, yeah. so they very well could have, maybe. Yeah, I could, I could tell. Well, this one might have been, so a lot of skulls and skeletons in the past have come from India. Yeah. They have come from China. Majority, majority of the skulls came from India. This gentleman probably was a, that of a North American uh, skull just because of the preparation. So we can see, we can tell by, you know, the hardware used on this mm -hmm. um, of what, you know, region it came from. So we believe this came from India. Okay. So maybe geographically they might not have met each other, but... Probably not. Probably not. Unless he went on a vacation to yeah. India.